media, media really loves innovation. Media kind of universally gets excited by innovation, which is great, which is why working in the media industry is so exciting. The trouble is that media, as distinct from TV, is still relatively immature as a sector. And so when we get excited about something, we actually lack sophistication in analyzing how that thing is going to impact particular segments of the media industry. And that's something we're seeing around the whole world of immersive tech. The conversation about it is chaotic. And it's amazing how often you hear the expression, oh, it's going to be a whole new kind of thing we haven't even thought of yet. Oh, we don't really know. Oh, we're going to find out. Now, my name is Mark Harrison. I'm the Managing Director of the Digital Production Partnership. And the DPP is an organization that started a few years ago informally, but then 18 months ago became a not-for-profit membership company and has rapidly become the media industry's business change network. So we've got more than 200 companies and organizations who in 18 months have joined the DPP. And the reason why they join is because we have an ability to access the entire supply chain. We have a membership that goes from production, 85 production companies, all the way through the supplier base, right up into broadcasters and distributors. And we go from startups, innovators, we, to the big global media giants. And because of that, we're able to get very precise and informed insight into business change that enables us to help our membership and the industry more broadly to see where the opportunities really lie. So of course, we wanted to look at the whole world of immersive tech. What we do when we have a problem is we tend to get about 25 of our, of our membership together who are very senior decision makers because we want to be talking to people who can really change things. So we brought together 25 C-suite level people who make decisions and have an interest in immersive tech. And we asked them the question, how exactly is immersive tech going to impact the media industry? And particularly, how is it going to impact TV? Now, when you think about this subject, it's, it's kind of hard to get your hands around at first, OK? If you try and do it through a genre lens, as is often done, it doesn't really make much sense. Genre is a kind of TV construct. It doesn't really exist in the, in the real world. It doesn't gonna mean much to consumers. So instead, we thought about the problem by thinking about four media types through which people currently consume. The first of those is gaming. Okay, gaming is distinctive for the agency the individual has in the media activity. They may not be the only one, there may be other players as well who have agency, but there's a, a lot of personal agency around gaming. Which is why you can see it's inherently well suited to immersive tech. Now about 15 years ago when gaming started to get really big, you know, a lot of people in TV were like, oh we must get into gaming, what's our, what's our role in gaming? And of course they tried, they wasted lots of money, they failed, and then they realized that actually it's fine. Gaming can, and it does, coexist as a multi-billion pound media industry that sits as a companion to TV. It's not a threat, it's a companion. And the second media grouping is, is storytelling. Now storytelling is the bread and butter of TV. And it's really important when thinking about immersive tech to understand that storytelling is not one thing after another. So, John got up one morning, he went downstairs, he bought himself a coffee, and he came back home. It's not a story. It was Sunday morning. John was woken by the sun streaming through his windows. His three-year-old son slept peacefully in the room next door. John looked out of the window, down into the street, where he could see the cafe opposite opening. He could see them preparing the espresso machine. He could see them placing pastries in the window. He looked at his watch. How long would it take me to dash down 
get myself a beautiful breakfast and get back and have half an hour of my own time. Glancing into his son's room, he shot out through the door. It was a decision to leave his son that he took in a moment, but it was a decision that would change the rest of his life. Okay, that's the story, okay? Now, however crap that little story was that I've just dreamt up here and now, I've got agency over it, you're passive. You probably want to know what's gonna happen next a little bit. They're probably not that bothered about trying to control the story yourself. That's really crucial. The agency sits with a third party in storytelling. Now the third kind of media category is, is experience. Experience is all about empathy. It's about being able to imagine yourself or place yourself somewhere else. And that might be to understand and use context, to understand a place. It might be to, to know what it's like to do heart surgery or it might be to know how to put up a shelf. Okay, it's taking yourself somewhere to see what it's like to do something or be somewhere. Television has a go at doing experience and around things like live events, it does it, it, does it pretty well. But it's by no means it's like first order skill. And agency here is very complex. Sometimes it's with the individual, sometimes it's with third parties. It makes it inherently interesting for the world of immersive tech. The fourth area is what we call making. So making is actually the fact that, that consumers now have such access to high quality media technology that in fact they can start to shape things themselves. And anyone here who's ever done any of those uh, very high end VR demos that involve sculpting or painting will know how incredibly compelling they are. And I think it really is possible that with time we will start to see people using immersive tech in order to kind of carry out hobbyist activities in a way that possibly could start to become substitutional for TV. So as a group, these 25 very senior and experienced people considered these four areas and we asked, okay, so which ones do you think are innately well suited to immersive tech and immersive tech is innately well suited to them? Top of the list, gaming, no question. Second on the list, experience, no question. Third on the list, storytelling. Making, people haven't got enough experience of yet to really, I think, have a sense of whether or not thought it's going to be important. So already, people are saying that storytelling is a weak spot. And then we asked everybody to come up with some ideas. He said, give us, top of head, give us some creative application. Give us some things you'd like to see carried out through these technologies. They came up with lots of ideas. They kind of didn't bother with gaming because they see that as being a skill area for other people that they don't have experience in. But they came up with three times as many experience ideas as they did storytelling ideas. And those experience ideas were around things like uh, consumer and retail experiences, uh, news, events like sports and concerts, education and training, social applications like uh, virtual working, and even health, okay? So a whole range of different areas, but what's distinctive about them is, if you think about that, that set of business opportunities around experience, you're not looking at a television heartland. Yeah, some parts of TV are very good at doing news, and yeah, we do, we do some event stuff. But as a group of opportunities, it hasn't got TV written all over it, and that could be very disruptive. Because we're gonna see companies emerge that are specialists in creating experiences for the immersive world and they are unlikely to come from the TV community. Now, what does all this tell us? I think it tells us a few really, really significant things. The first is that actually, this isn't really a world of chaos at all. It's actually, this is a world which has got quite a lot of clarity to it. If you go to the trouble as a company or as an organization of thinking through your core brand, your core proposition, your core capability, you will actually know what kind of media works best for you and could actually work in immersive tech or not. 
So if you're Sky, if you're a broadcaster like Sky and you do a huge amount of live sport, you're going to be very aware of the potential for immersive experience in the sport. And it's quite rational that you should devote some of your time and your money to that. If you're a broadcaster like ITV, mostly works around storytelling and entertainment, do you know what? They came out of this session saying, we don't think we need to really worry about this in the next five years. And what was very interesting was in that group, half the room felt that if they worked, if they were, if they were in a company or organization that majored in drama, a drama was its bread and butter, that even in five years' time, they needn't be thinking about immersive tech. Even in five years' time, they needn't be thinking about immersive tech. Because that's how poorly suited it is to their core business. I think the other thing that one could take from all this is that actually, you know, we know that what happens with technology is when you get a major technology shift, the things that impact are often the things that nobody ever really thought of. And, and in hindsight, they can appear blindingly obvious. And in this instance, and the clues in the, clues in the name, immersive technology. Because I'm not sure that the most important thing for us to be getting to grips with right now is the technology. I mean, yeah, that's going to go on developing, and as many have said here today, you know, it will get better and better, and the experiences will get better, and technology will get easier. But actually, look at the immersive bit. Because there's something that, that unites the world of television and the world of VR and AR and 360, and that's the growth of immersion. You know, TV, picture and sound gets better and better every year. It's starting to become extraordinary in its quality. But also, the kind of money that's spent on creating highly immersive storytelling experiences gets greater and greater and better and better. It's not as if storytelling in 2D is standing still. Yeah, Game of Thrones, Mad Men, Breaking Bad, these are utterly immersive drama experiences in 2D. So then maybe what gets quite interesting is the side of all this that is sometimes referred to but actually least talked about, and that's virtual theater. Because that's potentially the meeting place between these two things. You know. Are Netflix going into VR and AR? No, they're not. They're, they've said they're not. Why aren't they? Because they don't see it as being core to their proposition, which is people lounging on a sofa often with others, binging on engrossing immersive storytelling. Okay? So they're not bothered about it. Do I think that in five years' time, Netflix will be producing interactive VR storytelling? No, they won't. They won't in 10 years' time. They won't ever. But do I think that in maybe only about two or three years' time, we could be watching Netflix, 2D, high quality storytelling in a headset with the benefit of immersive audio and with that highly immersive private blacked out space that you can be in, particularly somewhere like an airplane, and I absolutely do. And that's why if I was an entrepreneur with a few million pounds or dollars, that's where I put my money. Thank you very much.